Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this session we're going to be talking about what is Power Automate. Now, Power Automate is the workflow engine tool that Microsoft 365 gives you to automate certain repetitive tasks or create approval workflows or generally just making your life a lot more easier through the likes of automation. The basic version of Power Automate is available to people with most generic kind of Microsoft 365 licenses. Um, you only necessarily need to pay extra for Power Automate if you're looking for some premium connectors. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. But essentially, a premium connector is when you have to use a service which is over and above the kind of the, the free kind of tools which Microsoft are giving you. And often premium connectors are connecting to third party things. Um, but there's a few sneaky ones as well. So even certain things uh, like working with uh, Microsoft Word um, to do things um, you, you can potentially run into uh, situations where you need to use a premium license. But for most things, you would typically be covered during the, the normal licenses. And anything which does require premium connection will tell you and will um, force you basically to, to have a license. So you won't end up sort of racking up any costs or anything like that inadvertently. Now to get to Power Automate, all we need to do is go to office.com and we can either find it through the app launcher on the left hand side or you can even just search across the top Power Automate and then that will then find you the app. Once you click on that, that will then jump you into the Power Automate um, editing designer portal. If it's your first time, you can just select what the sort of country or region is uh, and then that will then jump you directly into um, the Power Automate portal. Oops, let me just... Click that a bit too soon. There we go. Um, now on the left hand side you can see here we've got shortcuts of things like if you're building approval workflows and you want to see the actual approvals that are coming through you can get to them directly through this you can also create workflows and see uh, workflows you've previously created through this interface as well but what I would strongly suggest is for most people who are getting started using Power Automate first take a little look at the templates area because the templates area shows loads of different um, Power Automate workflows that other people have built which may be 80% of what you're looking um, for anyway um, but you can come through here and you can have a little look at some of the top kind of picks so uh, things like saving uh, Outlook emails attachments to your OneDrive automatically uh, creating a task inside of planner but there's all sorts of different things and it's not just integrations with Microsoft 365 products like Outlook or SharePoint or OneDrive or planner you can also find third-party things as well so if you search for the likes of uh, Twitter for example um, there is a integration with Twitter so there's loads of things in here so for example get a push notification when a tweet contains a certain keyword or maybe you're wanting to kind of like harvest um, a bunch of tweets which contain a keyword or um, there's loads of other things that you could potentially use um, with this and you can find all sorts of different third party connectors through this. So I would advise taking a look at these and you can actually copy the templates and reuse them and to have a little look at what's going on uh, with those templates. Now to create a new um, workflow, all you need to do is click on the create button on the left hand side. There's a couple of different types in here, but I'm not going to go too in-depth with all this at this stage. This is just a very high level, so I'm just going to go into uh, the, the automated cloud flow. And you can be guided through this, so you can be provided with kind of like what's the flow name. So I'm just going to call this my example flow. Um, and then you can give it a trigger. Now... The way the Power Automate works, in fact, I'm just going to skip this step um, because you don't have to do this. You can always come back. You have to specify a trigger, but we can skip on to this piece. The way that Power Automate works is that it has to kind of have a sort of linear flow. Um, like with anything in life, everything has a start, middle, and end. And this is the same with Power Automate. You have to have a starting point, something that is going to act as your trigger, the trigger of the workflow. So this could be all sorts of different things. Maybe it's an email that's coming in. Maybe it's a Teams message. Maybe it's a uh, file that's been uploaded or deleted or something like that from your SharePoint site. But if I expand this out, you can see there's all sorts of different integrations natively um, with uh, Microsoft tools, but also things which are commonly used third party tools like Jira or MailChimp or different things like that will natively integrate. But um, I'm actually just going to use um, just a basic thing. So I might just say, for example, uh, an email. So if I just look for Office 365 Outlook, and then I can say when a new email arrives, for example. So that's my triggering point, when a new email arrives. 
um, and I can just say in my inbox and that's my triggering point so this could be anything that I'm doing so maybe it's an email which is coming from a client or a supplier or my manager or something like that and maybe I get that email every week and I usually then do something with it like maybe I then um, convert it into a PDF and save it into a particular file or something like that and that's a manual task I do every single week I could automate that with this power automate um, now once we've got our triggering point, the next is we then need to add steps into our workflow. So the actual steps are contained with two different things. We've got controls, which are basically like things like saying a condition or apply to each. So a condition is like if this, then that, whereas an apply to each is like do this um, to every single item within this particular thing. And there's a bunch of different other controls as well. But the most common is condition. So it's kind of like saying, if this is equal to this, then this I want you to do this particular set of actions, if that's true, or these particular actions, if that's not. So for example, my action, uh, my, my, sorry, my condition for my trigger might be, if the email contains the words urgent, then I want you to instantly reply and say, I'm going to get onto that now, uh, and then send me a push notification to my phone or something like that. There might be different things I want to do in, in that sense. Um, so conditions are really useful um, for that to actually uh, manage the different pathways within inside of our workflow. Um, once you've actually got sort of conditions or anything like that set up, you can then add actions. So you can add actions without conditions, but you can add actions within conditions as well. Um, so actions, again, the integrations are all sorts of third party things. But let's say, for example, it might be um, something related to SharePoint I want it to do. So I can type in SharePoint, find the action for SharePoint, and this is where I've then got the, con the connection with all the different actions which exist for SharePoint. So I could add an attachment to something, I could create a file, delete a file, upload something. So these are all the different things that I can do as actions. So basically that will then build up a, a sort of structure of all the different things that I want it to do. Let's just add a quick action in here. And you can see all the actions will then happen one after another in the order that I put it inside of here. Um, and that's basically how Power Automate works. It's literally a top to bottom um, workflow tool. So we have a trigger, we can have conditions, we have actions within them, and it'll go from top to bottom. Um, it's worth knowing as well that workflows can only last up for th to 30 days. Um, so workflows can't just sit there forever, basically. Um, they can only last for up to 30 days. So if there's any particular, say, approval workflow or something like that, which you think is going to take longer than 30 days, then you're going to have to factor that into your overall um workflow maybe it, you're going to create an item in a database or create an item in a sharepoint list or something like that and you're going to periodically sort of go and check uh change that status and then maybe you've got a workflow which kicks in when it hits a certain status or something like that so maybe you've got um two or three different power automate workflows which are uh kicking off depending on the status of an item in a database or something like that but essentially um that's something to, to kind of consider when you're planning out what, what you're going to be doing with your workflows. Um, once you've created your workflow, all you need to do is then save it, uh, and you can always get access then to your workflows again by going to the My Flows area. You can also share uh, Power Automate workflows with people, and once you've done that, it will show up in your Shared With Me uh, area as a shared um, workflow. Another top tip as well is if you're a smaller kind of organization, um, or even a large one, um, you would potentially want to create a service account for your workflows because any emails or anything that's going to be interactive with anything is always going to be doing it in the context of the user account. So in this case, it's the Dougie Wood account. Um, so if I wanted to send out emails as reminders, for example, of documents which have not been uh, updated for, for a while or, or up for review or needs to go for approval, I don't really want those emails coming directly from me as the, the creator of the workflow. I might want to create a, a, a a sort of a system account called automated at or do not reply at or something like that so when i'm sending out those emails i can send it from that account instead and then it looks like a professional polished system i hope you enjoyed that video about what is power automate it's a quick high level um bird's eye view of what that is if you've got any questions please use the comments feed below let me know if there's any particular questions you have about power automate that you'd like to see some future videos on please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content um, and thank you very much for watching